Once you found a person, now you have to extract valuable information from them, right? This to me is the fundamental skill of, of a good journalist. There isn't a good journalist out there who can't get on the phone or meet somebody in person and get that person to give them information. So if that's not a skill set you have, if you're not comfortable calling someone up on the phone and saying, hey, I'm a reporter, I need, I need some information from you, you better get comfortable with that. Because if you're not comfortable with it, you're competing against legions of people who are really good at it. People like me who've been doing that for three decades. So how do you do it? How do you get somebody to give you good stuff? Well, there are two basic categories in my view. <laughs> you can either be a, an ass about it and get in someone's face and be a disruptor, be their worst nightmare. Or you can be nice about it and sort of understand where they're coming from and try to be friendly with them and get them to relax, right? I'm, this is an over-exaggeration, of course, but most people fall into two camps, all right? So who are those two guys? Anyone know? 60 Minutes. These are legends, legends. Mike Wallace over here and Ed Bradley. So which is which here? Who's the agitator and who's the empathizer? Oh, you better believe it. Every single interview he did start out, bam, hit you right in the face. He once did an interview. This is actually an amusing story. He once did an interview with Eileen Ford. Does anyone know who that is, Eileen Ford? She was the grand dame of the modeling agency. She started the Ford Modeling Agency, okay? And she was known as this genteel, erudite woman, you know, very stately. And Mike Wallace did an interview with her, and his first question is, what the hell are you doing? I'm paraphrasing, but basically, what the hell are you doing? You're creating this idealistic view of women that they're skinny and tall and lanky. No woman looks like that. Very few women look like that. And men, that's not what men want at either. So you're doing this incredible damage to the country and the world. This, this is how he starts his interview with her, right in her face, okay? Ed Bradley is the opposite. He is avuncular, right? How you doing? Hey, it's great to see you. I'm glad that you're here. That uh, starts with the softball questions, gets the person to feel comfortable, and ultimately works up to the harder questions. I can't tell you how to do one or the other, but I can tell you this. You have to do what you feel comfortable doing. If it's not comfortable for you, it's not gonna work. I don't feel comfortable being Mike Wallace. Right? I am, I am the, I'm in the Ed Bradley camp, <laughs> okay? Even when I'm talking to mafia hitmen, which I've done, or convicted killers and rapists, which I've done, I start by trying to see their point of view, trying to, trying to make some kind of a connection with them. So whatever you do, you have to be comfortable with it. Now, let's say you get your, your source on the phone, your new source. This is a checklist. This is something that I rely on when I do reporting and when I have somebody, particularly a new person, on the phone. What do I need from, not from them in general, but from this conversation? I'm reporting a story and I need this person on this subject to tell me something specific. And sometimes I'll have one or two or three priorities. I list them. I write out my questions on a separate piece of paper, okay? I don't know how many people still use this, but I do. What's this? It's a reporter's notebook. <laughs> Old school, right? Why does it look like, this is Contently, this is the former, my, my organization was once the Contently Foundation, it's been renatched, renamed the Hatch Institute. So they gave me all these reporter's notebooks. But why is it shaped like this? It's so that when you're standing on the street, you can hold it easily with one hand and you get a long thing to write, right? So when I'm doing reporting, I tear off, generally tear off one of these pieces of paper and put it aside with the questions, right? So I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. And, and the question that's at the top is the main thing that I want from this source. What do I need from this source? And now we're gonna get into a little bit of nitty gritty of how you actually talk to people. I don't wanna micromanage you on this, but I do wanna suggest a couple of things that are super useful. One of them is to use the word willing. 
People are willing. If you ask someone, are you willing? The answer is almost always yes. Okay, so I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. When I get somebody on the phone, hey, this is Brad Hamilton, I'm a reporter. Uh, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing a little story about uh, drug trafficking and I know you've spent your entire career as a supervising agent with the FBI, right? Uh, and I wonder, are you, I'm, I'm wondering, are you willing to share some of your insights with me? And do you have a second now? All right? The second part of it is end everything with a question. This is a tried and true technique, right? So I asked him, are you willing? I put that out there. Maybe I'm willing. Do you have a second now? That's an easier question to say yes to, right? It's like, a, it's, this is a technique that was developed through sales, if, if anyone's ever worked in sales, right? So the vacuum cleaner guy comes to your house and he's like, hey, you know, I got these vacuum cleaners. And you're like, hey. He says, listen, which do you like? Do you like red or you like blue? I don't know why I made him from Brooklyn. Do you like red or you like blue? Well, that's an easier question to answer. I like blue. And the bigger question of whether or not you're gonna buy the vacuum is pushed aside or subsumed a little bit, right? Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I, I know that you're, a, you're, a, you know, you're an agent with the, with the FBI and you work in drug trafficking. I wonder, are you willing, I'm wondering if you're willing uh, to share some of your insights from your, from your long career in this. Do you have a second now? Do I have a second now is a question that I can answer easily. Yes, I do, or no, I do not. We're putting aside the question of whether he's going to give me sensitive data that he shouldn't be giving me. All right? So practice this. Everything you say to them has to end with a question. Say, how long did you work in the FBI? Oh, that's amazing. You worked 12 years. That's a long time. And was it always in Wyoming? Cool. You must have worked on some great cases. What, do you, what, was, your, what was your best case? Always the question at the end, right? Then they get accustomed to having to answer it. Resistance. Many people don't want to talk to you. Why? They don't know you. They probably don't trust you. A lot of people hate the media. Okay? So, how do you get around that? Give me some ideas. You get somebody on the phone, they're not hanging up on you, but they're also not telling you, yes, I will talk to you. I think you just deal with it head on, like you just acknowledge you know, I can see why you might not want a reporting call it, re reporter calling you. Um, ask them, what can you do to build their trust? Can you meet them? Can you just talk with them before putting anything on the record? And if they give you any instructions for how to build their trust, you just like follow that. Like that's that's excellent advice. Deal with it head on. If they're saying no, if they're putting up some kind of problem in front of you, deal with it right then and there. Don't hope that it goes away because it won't. Other ideas? Anyone else? Yeah. Give them a reason to talk. Excellent. Excellent. You guys have, have both given me very good answers. And now I'm going to give you a little challenge. This actually happened a few days ago. I overheard a colleague of mine talking to the father, the 19-year-old kid who shot up that synagogue in San Diego. You call him up, you know, you're pretty sure he's the right guy because you looked through these databases and you got his number. He answers the phone and you say, what? You say, what? All right? Now, not much is at stake here. Only either you're going to get hung up on, that's the worst possible outcome, or you're going to get a national story that everyone is going to be talking about for the next 24 hours. That's all that's at stake here. What do you say to this person? Go ahead, give me some ideas. You're on the clock. Time's a ticking. 
you have an opportunity to score an exclusive story, which this actually did happen. I overheard a colleague of mine talking to the father of the shooter. What are you going to say? I think you just be upfront about who you are, what you're trying to write about, and then obviously I think that there are going to be some reservations on his end, but then talk about the importance of publishing the story and how it could potentially affect the people who read it. And uh, it's it's not like the father was proud of the, what the son did, I'm sure. So right. if he could prevent another parent from feeling the same way that he is right now, then that could help. That's a good that's a good approach. You're taking the empathizer view, right? How would Mike Wallace deal with that? What's wrong with you? How could you do this? You were, you're the father. Didn't you give this guy any good values? Come on. That's how he feels. That's how he responds. That's how he acts as a journalist. And who knows? Maybe that would work. Maybe your idea would work. Any other ideas? All right. Well, I'll tell you how I would have done it. I would have said something like, like you said, you know, listen, this is a, uh, I know this has got to be tough for you. Uh, I'm a reporter in New York. This story is breaking. There's going to be a news cycle and all that. You're probably unfamiliar with how news cycles work, but everyone's going to be covering this story. And I can guarantee you the coverage is not going to be favorable to your son. He's accused of this terrible crime. Right now, sir, is your moment to say what you think about your son, to tell the world what kind of a kid he really is. Do you have a second now? I would, re I would I wonder if you're willing to share a couple of insights about your son. For example, what was he like as a little kid? What was your favorite memory of him? Okay, I'm in the empathizer mode. Like, this isn't going to go good for you, but now you got an opportunity. I'm doing what you suggested, which is state the reason why he should be speaking to me. Now, right now, sir, is your opportunity to say something to the world about the kid you know to be your son. Right? Are you willing to share a couple of insights? Maybe, what about the first time that you, you know, you took him to school? You know, talk about stuff that's innocuous, that's easy for them to talk about. And then you get to eventually the number one priority on your list of questions that you need to get from this person, do you think he did it? And if so, why? Right? You're not going to ask that question right away because he doesn't know you from Adam and he's going to hang up on you. Right? More than likely. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe Mike Wallace's approach would work. That's not what I do. That's not what you would have done. But again, you have to be comfortable with whatever your approach is. All right. Also, you suggested something which is share a little information about yourself. I do that all the time, particularly when I cold call somebody. Hey, I'm calling from the New York Post. Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, uh, fine. What, what do you want? Well, I got to tell you, first of all, you got to understand something. I, I am sick of what's happening in the newsroom right now. It's all White House. I don't care about the White House. I care about what you know about, which is financial records from the city's Department of Transportation. That's what I care about. And I am really keen on this story. I've been reporting on this for a long time, and I really want to know a couple of things. Are you willing to talk to me for a couple of minutes? Do you got a second now? Right? Share something about you so they can imagine. They can see you sitting in a newsroom, or they can see you sitting at your desk, and they understand a little bit about what you want. Okay? I also always ask somebody, hey, you know, who else knows about this? Who else could I be talking to? Right? And by the way, I'd love to follow up. You've been really great. Thank you so much. I'd love to follow up. Can I get your cell phone? Everybody you ask for their cell phone. If you're a journalist and need free and premium resources for your work, please visit thehatchinstitute.org. If you're a journalist and are in need of news archives, and a database for finding people, go to expertaccess.org.